Have you ever wondered what was the spark that ignited the cosmic firework show that we call the Big Bang? And how do we know that our current theories are correct, or at least close to the truth? With the recent discoveries we get from JWST, we get an alarm every day that we need to revise our theories with images like the first galaxies ever formed that we ever discovered, and scientists are not sure how they exist, to data from the earliest strands of the cosmic web and many more. We need to pause for a moment and really think about our universe and our theories. In this episode, we will take a look at some of these recent discoveries and explain what caused the Big Bang in the first place. One of the most amazing discoveries made by James Webb is the most distant supermassive black hole ever detected. This black hole is so far away that its light took 13.4 billion years to reach us, which means we are seeing it as it was when the universe was only 670 million years old. That's less than 5% of its current age. This black hole is also incredibly massive, weighing about 1.6 billion times as much as our sun. How did such a monstrous object form so early in the history of the universe? According to our current models, it should not be possible. Black holes grow by accreting matter and radiation from their surroundings, but there is a limit to how fast they can do that. The radiation they emit pushes back on the incoming matter, creating a balance that prevents them from growing too quickly. This limit is known as the Eddington limit, and it implies that even if a black hole started with 100 solar masses at the time of the Big Bang, it would only reach about 10,000 solar masses by the time this black hole existed. That's still far from 1.6 billion. So either this black hole somehow violated the Eddington limit, or it had a different origin than most black holes we know of. Another example of a discovery that challenges our theories is the spectacular image of six ancient galaxies that James Webb captured recently. These galaxies are also very distant, dating back to when the universe was less than a billion years old. They are part of a larger structure called a protocluster, which is a precursor to a galaxy cluster, one of the largest structures in the universe. What's surprising about these galaxies is that they are very bright and active, producing new stars at a rate of hundreds or thousands per year. That's much faster than most galaxies we see today, which only produce a few stars per year on average. How did these galaxies become so productive so early on? And how did they form such a large and dense protocluster in such a short time? These questions are hard to answer with our current understanding of galaxy formation and evolution. In fact, there are countless number of these discoveries that James Webb made, and they keep coming, and we cover them with depth explanation on this channel. That's why it's important from time to time to stop and understand how do we see our universe, and if our theories are really reflecting the way our universe works. One of the most fundamental questions we can ask about our universe is what caused the Big Bang? What was the initial event that set everything in motion? Unfortunately, this question is not easy to answer because we don't have direct evidence or observations of what happened before or during the Big Bang. We can only infer what might have happened based on what we see today and what we know from physics. One possibility is that the Big Bang was not actually the beginning of everything, but rather a transition from a previous state of existence. For example, some theories suggest that our universe is part of a multiverse, a collection of many universes with different physical laws and properties. Perhaps our universe was born when two other universes collided, or when one universe split into two. Another possibility is that our universe is cyclical, meaning that it goes through phases of expansion and contraction over and over again. Perhaps our Big Bang was just one of many Big Bangs that happened in an endless cycle. Another possibility is that the Big Bang was indeed the origin of everything, but it was not caused by anything external or prior to it. Rather, it was a spontaneous event that happened out of nothingness. This may sound paradoxical or impossible, but quantum physics allows for such phenomena to occur at very small scales. For example, particles can pop into and out of existence in empty space due to quantum fluctuations. Perhaps something similar happened at the beginning of our universe, but at a much larger scale. Of course, these are just some of the possible scenarios that scientists have proposed to explain what caused the Big Bang. There are many other ideas and variations that we don't have time to cover here. The truth is, we don't know for sure what caused the Big Bang, and we may never know. But that doesn't mean we should stop trying to find out. 
The more we learn about our universe, the more we can appreciate its beauty and mystery. The Big Bang Theory is the best model we have to describe the origin and evolution of our universe. It is based on a wealth of observational and experimental evidence, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation, the expansion of space, the abundance of light elements, and the large-scale structure of matter. It tells us that our universe began as a hot, dense, and tiny point of energy that rapidly expanded and cooled down, creating space, time, matter, and radiation. It also tells us how the first stars and galaxies formed, how the elements were synthesized, and how the universe evolved over billions of years. However, the Big Bang theory is not a complete or final theory. It has some limitations and gaps that need to be filled or resolved. For example, it does not explain what caused the Big Bang itself or what happened before or during the first fraction of a second of the universe's existence. It also does not explain why the universe has the properties and parameters that it has, such as its shape, size, density, and rate of expansion. These are known as the initial conditions of the universe, and they seem to be finely tuned to allow for life and complexity to emerge. Why is that? Is it a coincidence, a necessity, or a design? To answer these questions, we need to go beyond the Big Bang Theory and look for new or modified theories that can incorporate new observations and discoveries, such as those made by James Webb. We also need to look for new ways of testing our theories, such as using gravitational waves, neutrinos, or dark matter detectors. We may also need to revise some of our fundamental assumptions and concepts about physics, such as gravity, quantum mechanics, or string theory. There are many possible alternatives or extensions to the Big Bang Theory that scientists have proposed or explored. Some of them are more radical than others, and some of them are more compatible with each other than others. Some examples are inflationary cosmology, which posits that the universe underwent a brief period of exponential expansion right after the Big Bang. Ekpyrotic cosmology, which suggests that our universe is a thin membrane in a higher dimensional space that collides with another membrane periodically. Loop quantum cosmology, which applies quantum mechanics to gravity and space-time, and holographic cosmology, which proposes that our universe is a projection of a lower dimensional reality. These are just some of the possible ways we can try to improve or replace the Big Bang Theory. However, none of them are proven or widely accepted yet. They are still speculative and tentative ideas that need more evidence and support to become established. Until then, the Big Bang Theory remains the best model we have to understand our universe. Thank you for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed learning about some of the amazing discoveries made by James Webb and what they mean for our understanding of the Big Bang and the origin of our universe. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new videos. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.